tells us that in Jeremiah. And so that we need to be extremely, extremely careful in following our conscience. Matter of fact, the Bible says that we can go so far as to, to sear our conscience by giving ourselves over to the sin. And so we, we need to be wise and exercise discernment when it comes to listening and to obeying our conscience. There's no doubt, though, that written on every one of our souls is eternity and the weight that it is carried with it. Solomon in Ecclesiastes says, also, he, being God, has put eternity into man's heart. So, sit still long enough. Be quiet long enough, and your conscience will bear witness that, in fact, what you know. That you know the difference between right and wrong. There's a desire for justice to take place and wrongs to be made right to have desires that this world can't fill. And you know that these things, you know these things not just because you were taught them as a child. They were enforced by your parents, but because someone wrote them on your heart. It's God speaking. Third, God speaks through circumstances as well as our own, but also others. And it, it takes some spiritual discernment to know what he is saying through our circumstances and the circumstances of others. Just like our consciences, we have to be careful in how we interpret it. But there is no question that God speaks to us through our circumstances <clears throat> and the experience of others. God never wastes a hurt or an opportunity. How do I know? Because one of the ways that God works is through those opportunities. They come along your way. It's the one of the ways that God speaks. For instance, we have earthquakes. California seems to get there are overabundance of them. I'm not trying to put any judgment there. I'm just telling you. Is God speaking? Well, I believe he is. And in a number of ways, he shows us the brevity of life. Those circumstances remind us that, that we are not in control. When people come to help, he's showing that those who have lost valuables and, and loved ones are not forgotten. His love is seen. In his word, we learn how creation is groaning due to the consequences of sin. He told us that Earthquakes would happen before he comes again. In a way, this is him speaking, get ready. I'm preparing my return. Many times, God uses circumstances and crisis to get our attention to listen to him. Author C.S. Lewis wrote, God whispers to us in our pleasures. He speaks in our consciences but he shouts in our pains. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Now in creation, conscience, and in circumstances, these are what we call general revelation. God speaks in this way to every person that walks the earth. Everyone can see the majestic heart of God in a, in a sunset, or the, the, clou the clouds, or or the mountains. So let's turn to how God then specifically gives revelation. And that first is Christ. We read in John 1, 1, 1, 14, In the beginning was the Word, speaking of Jesus, and the Word, Jesus was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. It's important for us to realize that Jesus is the final and full revelation of God. And I want you to see in this that God is not playing some cosmic Marco Polo game with us. He's speaking and is saying, I'm right here. He's the one that sought us out. He came to earth. 
Emmanuel, God with us. He's saying, I'm right here. So how can we recognize the voice of God? How do we know? Well, we need to get to know the voice of Jesus. He told his disciples in John 14, If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If you hear from Jesus, you are hearing from God. And the bottom line is this. If you want to hear God speak, you need to read the red. You know what I'm talking about there? In your Bibles. The words in red are the words of Jesus. Spend time, if, if you're worried about your time and you don't have time to read through the whole Bible, spend time every day reading through the red letters. And listen to Jesus speak, because in those, God speaks. And he will give you specific, when you read that, God through his spirit will show you and speak to you. Another way is the canon of scripture. Now, Simple way I could have just said the Bible. That's why I put it up there in parentheses. But you know what? In case you haven't noticed, if you're not using an outline, they all begin with the letter C. And, you know, the Bible starts with the letter. Okay? But anyway, but canon means standard or measuring stick. And the measuring stick of divine revelation, or God speaking to us, is set and established in the Bible. The Bible that's either sitting next to you on the pew or gathering dust on the coffee table at home or if you're like me, I tend to find myself using my cell phone app when I'm in God's Word. Because I have it's much easier to take in that respect. It is God's Word. Where the Bible speaks, God speaks. It is the authoritative Word of God. It is true. A few passages, few passages I like to quote here. We're going to just do one or two here, but Isaiah 40 verse 8 says, The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God will, what? Stand forever. Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and joints and marrow discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Paul tells Timothy in, in 2 Timothy here, all scripture is what? Breathed by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for the training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. God is still speaking today, and he speaks through his word and that's why we gather. We teach the word. We need to hear from God. And that's why our time alone is so important. Because when you open up your Bible and you spend time alone with God, he will speak to you through his word by his Holy Spirit. We wonder why we don't hear him. We've got to get into the red letters. Spend time with him and allow his spirit to work in our lives. That brings us to our next one, is the counsel of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's role is to, to glorify Jesus by taking what he has said and enable us to understand and obey it. Catch that? To understand it and obey it. And that's why he's called the Spirit of Truth in the Bible. He's called our counselor. John 16, verses 13 and 14, Jesus says, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, Jesus said, for he will take what is mine, and he will declare it to you. God speaks to us, by the Holy Spirit, and this is important, what he is speaking, what he is speaking is by his Holy, by the Holy Spirit will never, catch that, never contradict his word. It will never contradict his word. 
So if you ever sense God prompting you towards an action to do something or to say something to someone, and we'll give you some examples in just a moment, but just know that the Holy Spirit and the Holy Word of God will act in accord. They will be the same. They will line up, if you will. That voice that you're hearing will not go against what God says in the past. God is the same. He lives with the truth. He is truth. The truth doesn't change. Our relativity of the truth tends to change. And a final way that God is speaking to us today is through his church. That would be us. That would be us. Certainly this means through the teaching and preaching of God's word and what we're doing right now. God has established preaching as a means of communication to communicate his truth today. Romans 10 verses 14 and 15 says, How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him who they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. And so in the wisdom of God, it is the church, his church, you and I, that proclaims the word of God. And in the proclamation of his word, we can declare that he is speaking. God is speaking when his word is being declared honestly, when we declared it. The church also means gathering of saints. So he speaks through fellow believers. And this is why there's wisdom in an abundance of counselors. This is why there's wisdom in not skipping out on church. God speaks through his church. And why someone would not want to make a habit of showing up where God speaks, I don't know why they would. Together, in the Word of God, filled with the Spirit of God, we can discern rightly the voice of God. And this really helps in the gray matters of life, doesn't it? There are some things that God clearly speaks to, and it's laid out for us in black and white. We read the Bible, and we, we hear about sexual immorality. He says to avoid it. He talks about giving. He says, live open-handed, be generous. He says, love justice. We don't have to wonder whether or not we should share the gospel or whether or not we should be living on mission. That's very clear when we read God's word. There are those things that God speaks, those things he speaks very clearly on. But you know, those are those what we call the gray areas. Should I make this move to a new location? Is it the right time for, to change my career? Do we move forward with an adoption? Do we take the next step in our relationship? And this is where God will use his Holy Spirit and his church to really help clarify if and how he is speaking. Maybe you've experienced it. He'll use his people and in the process will usually grant his peace as a decision is being made. Although bear in mind this, that it may take a step of faith first. In the story of Moses, you realize that Moses was there, and it says Moses step a, he turned away, and God spoke. I'm telling you that there's no doubt about this. God is still.